This is my Colleen workflow for Lightroom Classic. Welcome to the Visual Center. I'm Trent. In this video, I'm going to share with you my culling process in Lightroom Classic. Culling is an important step in any post-production workflow. It literally means to select from a group. So this is how I select the images I'm going to keep and edit after a photo shoot. This set of images were created during an exercise I participated in with some of my students. So obviously I've already copied the images onto the computer and into the software. To start, I'm going to flag my images. Now I have two options. I can choose to flag using the P key or I can use the X key to reject an image. Or I can also go up to photo, set flag, and select flag or rejected. Now, while this process is called flagging, it's also known as picking, hence the letter P as the shortcut. Now, I'll either use one or the other. I'm either going to pick or reject some images. The reason why is this is a rough selection. I'm going to be deleting the completely rubbish images, the images I'll never use. The great thing about this process is it deletes 20 to 30% of my images on this initial selection. All right, let's get started. I'm going to double click to go into loop view, and then I'm going to hit X for any image I just want to get rid of that I don't really like. And usually what I'm looking for is bad exposures or bad compositions. Um, I think this one's a little too crooked. Those ones are fine. I don't really like that one. The focus is a little off on these ones. Yeah, they're, these ones aren't that great. So now that one's completely out of focus. I don't know what it's a photo of. These ones are okay. They're in focus. Composition's fine. These ones work. Um, this is interesting. These are fine. This one, um, the focus, the depth of field is too shallow. So I won't be using that one or that one. That one again as well, these two. This is the list for the exercise we were doing. Um, probably too bright, these images. So I'll delete those, those work. Now this image, oh, this is a beautiful image, whoever this person is. Now these images here are okay. I don't like really, there's nothing really to look at in those images. Not really a subject matter other than just kind of a bunch of trees so I'll get rid of these I'm never gonna use them those ones are fine nice building as I mentioned that was just a rough selection really just picking the images I want to keep basically any image that were in focus or have a good exposure and a decent composition if the images contain people I would have been looking for decent facial expressions and open eyes all right, since I use the rejected shortcut, I'm going to filter to only see my rejected images by selecting this icon here. These are all the images I've rejected from that initial selection. So I'm going to hit Command A to select all and then right click on an image and select Remove Photos. Now usually I'll delete from the disk because I won't be doing anything with these images, but for right now I'm going to remove from Lightroom. So now all of my rejected images are gone. So if I turn this filter off, now we can see the images that I chose to select throughout that entire shoot. Now that I have a better starting point for my next step in the culling process, I'm now going to apply a star rating to my images. I'll be using the number keys zero through five, or I could go up here to photo, set rating, and then select the number of stars I would like to apply to my images. Now the purpose of this step is to make a selection of my best images. I'm going to be using the number one key to set a one star rating for my best images. All right, I like that image. That's gonna create a nice black and white. So we'll one of these, uh, that's an okay image. So that I think I can pull that red out. Um, I like one of these for the shoot we were doing. I think I like one of this first flower image, blossom image. And these concrete lined images, I think it would also make a great black and white. So I'm gonna select a composition I like. These ones are okay, I'll create, select one of them. And I like this tail light image. I think the reds and the greens of that image are gonna be really nice. So I'm gonna select two of those, I think they're the best composition. And this railing image, another great black and white, I think. Um, this image, let's see, I like that one with a flare on it. An image of the shadows. Obviously, I have to pick an image of myself looking casual. That's great. 
Uh, that one should have been rejected. Let's see, I thought these ones were kind of neat with the, um, maybe trying to make the tree make up some negative space. The image of this doorway would be nice and that building would be nice. All right, after doing that, I often find that I've selected too many images. So I'll actually filter out the zero star images by selecting this icon here with the one star. And these are all the images I just gave a one star to. So these are my best images from that shoot. Now, if I need to, I'll go through and add a second star to images that are the best of the best, meaning I'm going to pull out fewer images from this set. So I'll just use the number two key to create that final selection of images. Go through here. I think that first one's nicer. I like that one better. That black and white would be cool. I like these two images and that one. All right, so now if I filter based off of two stars, we can see I have a smaller selection of images. All right, I think that may be enough. If I still had too many images, I would narrow down my selection even further by utilizing a third star rating. Now, I don't think I've ever done more than three stars on a set of images. Now, at this point, I'll usually determine whether or not I'm going to use a specific image for a specific purpose. I'll be using virtual copies and the color labels to identify images that will be used on my website, on social media, or maybe images which I would like to convert to black and white. It depends on the job. So let me show you how I do that. All right, so if I find an image I'd like to maybe use on my website, what I will do is I'll create a virtual copy by typing command apostrophe. Or I could select the image and go up to photo, create virtual copy. So now that I have a virtual copy of that image, you can see here two of two, I can type in the number six to set that color label of the image to red. I'm gonna go through here and select a few other images. So let's do a command apostrophe and then do six. I think this concrete black and white would be kind of cool. So command apostrophe and then number six. And then I think I can get something out of this one. Command apostrophe six. And then that building one is gonna be great. Command apostrophe and six. Now, the reason I create virtual copies is because sometimes I'll have an image which I would like to use in multiple locations. Now, currently in Lightroom Classic, we can't add multiple color labels on a single image. So in order to label an image with multiple colors, I need multiple copies of the image. Now, after I've color labeled my images, I can now add them to a collection or folder for a specific location. All right, at this point, I have my selection of images and I've identified where I'll be using specific images. I could have color labeled them for my website, for social media, or just to convert them to black and white. Currently, I've used the red color label to identify images I'd like to use on my website. So I'm going to use a smart collection that I've made here for website images to filter out all my images with a red color label. So from this last shoot, these are the images that I'm going to be using on my website. So you can see that I can use smart collections to quickly find all the images for my specific purposes. All right, that concludes my culling process in Lightroom Classic. I use flags to make an initial selection or create a rough first edit. Then I use stars to narrow down my best images. If I needed to, I used a second or third round of stars. Then I utilize virtual copies and color labels to easily identify where my best images will be used. And remember, smart collections are a great way to filter out all other images so I can easily find the images intended for a specific purpose. Culling is an important step in any post-production workflow. If you have any questions about mine, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.